Welcome to our Science Lab's Equipment Identification Lab. The first tool we're going to be talking about is an Erlenmeyer flask, also known as an e-flask. It's a type of lab glassware which consists of inverted conical base with a cylindrical neck. Now the shape allows it to contain gases and other contents. A beaker is a type of lab glassware which consists of a cylindrical cup with a notch on the top to allow the pouring of liquids. Now this may remind you of a, a kitchen measuring cup. It's also a Pyrex piece, so if you have those Pyrex measuring cups at home, this will kind of look familiar. The most important thing that you need to do, or I should say know about this, is that never ever mistake this for a glass that you can drink out of. We never know what could have been in there and what residues could be there. So even if it looks clean, we just, we just never drink out of a beaker in our room. Stoppers. Stoppers are pieces of rubber or cork that we use to close off a glass tube on e-flask or any kind of other lab glassware. Sometimes we'll put them in the top of here and they'll have a glass tube or a plastic tube that will take, trap the gases and take them and transfer them to another container. Test tubes. Test tubes are these wonderful little finger-like length of glass tubing. It's open at the top, sometimes with a rounded edge like these, and a rounded U-shaped bottom. They are designed to allow for easy heating of samples to be held in a flame and often are made of expansion-resistant glassware, such as Pyrex. The test tube rack and the test tube holder are the same thing. This is what we use to make sure that all of our test tubes aren't just being held in our hands or laid onto the table where they would roll off. This keeps it safe and it's a great way to store them and hold them upright when we're using them. Remember, test tubes are very fragile. The test tube holder and brush. The test tube holder is kind of like a clip and if you can you just grab a hold of it and this allows you to put this over an open flame whether it's a Bunsen burner or candle without actually having to hold the glass because the glass will actually heat up keeps it safe making sure that whenever you're holding this over a flame that the opening is always pointed away from you so if it should bubble or boil it doesn't splash also make sure you're not aiming it at your science lab partner as for the brush, it is very important that you don't grip the test tube when you're shoving the, the brush inside. Make sure that you're holding it gently because the more you grip and grasp, the more likely it is, especially for some of our students who are very strong, to crush these test tubes. They are very fragile. A graduated cylinder also referred as a measuring cylinder, is a type of lab glassware that is used for measuring the volumes of liquids. So if we want to know how much water was in a bottle, we would use a graduated cylinder to find that out. Now there's a couple keys to doing this. It's important to remember that when you're reading a graduated cylinder, we don't hold it up in the air. We make sure it is flat on a tabletop and we bring it, we bring ourselves down to eye level where we can read exactly where the water line or the meniscus is. Also remember that the uh, formula for volume of a, like a block is V equals length times width times height. Now that's a classic formula. Make sure you jot that down. Different times during our labs, we may need to ask you, what is the volume of an irregular shaped object? If we know it's a cube, we can apply the length times width times um, height, or even a cylinder length times width, and I'm not exactly sure on that one right off the top of my head. What we do need to do is, if we have something like this metal key, let's say we want to know the volume of this. Well, because it's an irregular shape, it's not going to follow a formula. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the graduated cylinder, which in this case 
is exactly 170 mLs. And we're going to go ahead and drop the key into the graduated cylinder. And we're gonna go ahead and read where it's at. And I'm gonna bring it close so that you can see. So there's a little bit of difference. And this says it is approximately 174. What we'll do is we'll take the last volume, which was 174, and we'll subtract the first volume, which was 170 mLs, and the difference is actually the volume of the key itself. A Petri dish. A Petri dish is a shallow glass or plastic cylindrical dish. Now we use these when we look at uh, molds or any kinds of cultures that were growing molds. We will tape it off so that as we observe it on a daily basis, we don't actually have to touch it. We don't open those because mold spores can get airborne and the last thing we want is to have people sick. So please keep the Petri dishes sealed so that we're safe in the, cl in the classroom labs. A funnel is a conically shaped pipe employed to, as a device to channel liquid or substances into containers with small openings. For example, if we were trying to put a liquid in here without spilling, we probably would prefer a funnel because that is such a small opening that most likely we would spill. The eyedropper. Now we have the classic eyedropper. It is glass, so it will break. So when we need these, we truly need to learn how to make a drop that is a drop, and that is a squirt. And when we do things in the lab, I will say you need three drops. One, two, three. So there's a difference. Microscopes are things that we use in our classroom. They are probably the best tool we have. We even have a, a microscope that will actually project on screen so that we can actually show what we're seeing. We'll be looking at different types of cells, different types of plants, and see if we can identify different things. When you carry a microscope, let's say you're cleaning up or you're moving it from the counter to your science table, make sure that you hold it by the arm and the base. The arm is here and the base is here. Microscope slides and slip covers, I will always have them kept in my uh, front lab set. You'll need to ask for all of these. Please make sure that when you hold them that you also, just like the test tubes, are very careful because they are extremely fragile. And when we get into slides, we'll show you how to prepare a slide and how to dispose of them also. Hand lenses. We have the plastic version of the hand lens where we have two viewing sites. We have the large viewing which will magnify basic and then if we really want to look carefully and we want to get even closer than what the big um, lens has we can look at the smaller lens and it'll magnify it even larger. When using a triple beam balance you need to make sure that you zero the balance before you start. Make sure that the balance is very close to the zero, if not exact. Remember, in science, it's about exact readings. If your balance isn't zeroed before you even start with the glides, make sure you see the teacher so that she can show you how to zero it. The most important thing to do now is when you weigh it, you always put the mass on top, of the, the plate and you're going to start with the middle bar or the hundreds glide. So you're going to go one, oh, it already went down. You go until the bar goes down. It must click. You can't keep it in between right here. You must have it click. Now because it's already too heavy, I need to back it up. That means 100 grams. It's not over 100 grams, it's under. So then I'm going to go to my back glide. 10, 20, 30, 40, getting closer, 
50s too much, so I'm going to back it up to the 40. At the 40 mark, now I'm going to go ahead, figuring it's between 40 and 50, just little by little, I'm going to go until this lines up perfectly. Now, it's really important to know how to read a triple beam balance. Again, your readings must be exact. In this case, you have no hundreds, so you're gonna start at the 40s. So you have 40, and you're not quite to 41, so you're gonna count each one of the little tick marks. The halfway point is five. This one actually shows that it's on the sixth tick mark. So this is 40.1 or excuse me, point six, excuse me, 40.6. When you're done, take the weight off, zero the balance, and prepare to do your next measurement. Safety goggles are a must in our lab. For varieties of reasons, you have to wear these. It's very important that when the directions call for all students to wear them, that you don't just put them on top of your head, that you actually hold them down. At any time, if you do not have your goggles on, I can ask you to leave the lab, which will result in a zero for that lab day. It's very important also that you know that splatters and accidents happen all the time. And the last thing you want to do is have an issue with a splash in your eye in a chemistry room. Thermometers. Thermometers are used frequently in our classroom. We take measurements all the time. We have metal and we have glass ones. These are made of glass. They are not mercury based and they are just an alcohol based. It is very important, like the test tubes and the microscope slides, that you are very careful with them. If one breaks, you need to report it to the teacher immediately. If you are taking a temperature, of a beaker like this, there's a rubber little stopper that you were able to actually just kind of put there. It'll hold it so it doesn't fall loose and roll around on <clears throat> the top of the beaker. Hot plates. Very often we'll use a hot plate to heat up water or other substances. If you are in a, sit in a station with a hot plate, you need to wear gloves when you pick up the, pot and the pots and pans. Even if you don't think that it's hot, you must wear the gloves. Please remember that if the light's on, the burner is on. If the light's off, the burner is off. Other equipment we use are meter sticks, stopwatches, measuring tapes, and of course, plastic gloves. All of these are very simple to have, and if you need any of them for any experimentation, please make sure you see your teacher.